Hello, Michael Bull here with the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're in Boston at Disrupt CRE, where technology meets capital meets commercial real estate. We just had a great session inside the box, rethinking space. We have the panelists here. We're going to share some takeaways that came out of this session. And first of all, guys, if you could introduce yourself and to have a little fun here, tell us what your favorite movie is. Sure. Hi, this is Stas Gation. I'm a managing director at the Cambridge Innovation Center in Boston. And uh, my favorite movie is actually an old classic, Broken Arrow. Very good. Hi, I'm Michael Gresty. I'm CEO of Affinity. We're a software company that helps uh, commercial tenants understand their space use and optimize for it. Uh, my favorite movie is uh, Vim Vanders, uh, The American Friend from, I think it was 1976. Nice. Uh, my name is John Steffens. I'm the president at IdeaPaint. We're a communication technology company. And my favorite movie is Forrest Gump. Nice. Hi, I'm uh, Phil Hammond. I'm the director of graduate programs at Wentworth Institute of Technology. Um, and my favorite movie is uh, The Princess Bride. Nice. Well, mine's Cool Hand Luke. I can say it, right? Yes. What we have him is a failure to communicate. There you go. <laughs> I'm shaking that bush, boss. All right, so guys, you were there. It was a great session. You guys have some great technology that uh, you deal with every day. What would be a good takeaway from that session uh, for our listeners? Collaborative space. Everyone's talking about collaborative space. I think these panelists uh, were very good at explaining um, the need for it and how we have to uh, evolve into it in the next 10 years. I, I think the real estate industry is well known to be pretty conservative, and it's good to see that there's a room full of people thinking maybe we'll do things a little bit differently. That's good. I think we all think about mobile technology and talk about it as the smartphones and how we get things done, but it really is changing the way people work, and I think that came home again today, that it's radically innov affecting the real estate industry, and it hasn't re the industry hasn't really caught up with how mobile technology is changing the way people work. Yeah, yeah. it's a changing world, isn't it? Yeah, and, and, and that, I think that was a critical takeaway, not only how it's changing how the workforce, uh, how, or how the workspace is designed and operates and how people work, but then how do you marry collaboration in a more dispersed workforce? And actually, let me add to that with, uh, to, to Michael's comment. I think actually the most mobile technology is people. And technology has enabled people to be more mobile. We, you know, we often think of mobile technology as being phones that move around, but phones are just things. People move around, phones enable us to do that. That's a good tip. Well, give us a, a tip on space, on optimizing the use of our space. So if I'm running a business and, and I've got a lot of office space, what are some tips for more efficient use? Well, that's kind of the focus of our business at Refinity. We help mm -hmm. customers understand which spaces are being used, why they're being used, and how to optimize for that. And one of the tips is get the data. Mm -hmm. Most uh, companies don't have any data on space use. They don't know who's using what, when. They guess at it, they do a walk around, uh, and they're usually wrong. So perception is typically that companies are using their space at about 80% efficiency. The data shows it's about 40%. So 60% of space is wasted, paid for, but not used. Without data, you can't get to that. You can't figure out how many conference rooms you need, how big they should be, where they should be in relation to other spaces, what kinds of conference rooms people want to use versus collaborative spaces, desks, and so on. And I think in the past, that kind of data maybe wasn't available if it was it was expensive but it's gotten less expensive and and better hasn't well that's what our platform optimo is all about is making that data available 24 7 for continuous improvement mm -hmm. well if you if you did a, a study of my office you'd say michael why do you go from one into the other all the time just constantly <laughs> walking around right uh what are some other tips guys well, in the academic environment, there's a lot of uh, different types of spaces. There's, uh, there's uh, lecture space, there's uh, classroom space, there is uh, academic space. So each space requires a different uh, set of tools and, and uh, technology in those spaces. So when people are designing new uh, classrooms and new dormitories, especially dormitories now, um, the Wi-Fi, the mobility for the students, uh, and, and also my adult learners that are coming in after working a full day, having that capability uh, on campus to be able to, to learn and, and to be successful. Yeah, no? so I, I was going to say, not, not only getting the facts, which is, which is critical, right, mm -hmm. but also understanding the expectations your teams are, uh, are, are looking for from an office space. So does that marry up with the data? If not, why? And then how do you then design around it? Yeah. 
And I think you could you have to say that shared spaces really matter, and a lot of companies that haven't previously considered working in the shared space really should. Interesting. So what's the space of the future look like? I mean, you guys are on the forefront of knowing what we're going to see down the road. Uh, what should we expect three, four, five years from now to be different about the space that we're working in? Well, I think the key term for me is agile, agile design, agile working. Mm -hmm. It's not just about agile software, which is a more common understanding of that term, but the workspace has to evolve with the workforce. And as mm -hmm. uh, generational changes occur, as changes in work habits occur, the workspace has to evolve and adapt to different kinds of furniture, different kinds of work styles, different kinds of collaboration. And so that old 10 or 15 year old lease is history now. People are looking at three year leases or less if they can, and they're not building out spaces for 10 years. They're looking at what they need to do for the next few years, and then they're going to iterate again. And that continuous improvement is going to be what's going to dominate commercial real estate coming. Well, yeah. it's nice to be adaptable. So that means my bean bags that I use and move around, I'm doing pretty good. There you go. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Agile and flexible. No, but I think that flexibility is critical. And what's, what's interesting is you think of education, which at times, well, it's, it's much more in its ways. But you think about some of the furniture that's been de developed for the, for the education market because a classroom at 9 o'clock might be a, science, uh, a, a math classroom and then at 11 o'clock you may have a history lecture and how it's being taught is different. Be able to, to, to shift that room around to provide a better environment for the class that's currently in there is already happening. To be able to do that in the office space so as your, your, uh, your, your, your associate uh, base changes, whether it gets bigger or smaller, it gets older, it gets younger, to be able to realign that office without having to tear down walls and move makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a strong question as we go forward about what it means to be, have privacy in the office versus what it means to have your own dedicated space. What privacy? In, 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 well, but who needs, who needs their own dedicated office and what do they need it for? There are clearly some people who need it. There are clearly some people who don't need it. And there are a bunch of folks in the middle who could go either way. And I think the, what we're going to see is offices are starting to ask the question of who should be working with whom. And should we really build walls that prevent people from working with the people they really need to collaborate with? Or should we enhance certain different disconnections in the office? Um, the smartest companies have already done it. Everyone else is just going to follow along. Well, I need my privacy. When I'm reading uh, cartoons, I don't want anyone to see it. I mean, no. <laughs> Well, one of the things I read this week in preparing for this, this, this session was uh, the concept of collision space, creating spaces where people just collide in the office. And the other concept I read about this week was wellness certified buildings, buildings that are, 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 are certified that the, the people that work in them will not get sick in them. So you know, maybe that's the wave of the future, I'm not sure, but I think that uh, with panelists like this, uh, we can really get some really nice buildings in the next several years. Yeah, and collisions, I just want to build on collision space, it's something we talk about all the time. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind for, for anyone. At the end of the day, our minds don't say, I'm only going to think of an idea when I have a scheduled meeting in the boardroom at 3 <laughs> o'clock on Thursday. Right. Ideas happen all the time. And if you can create a space, and, I, and you, know, you hit on it a couple times in there, Stas, where you can see what's being discussed or see what's being written on an idea wall and have people have opportunities to share that idea in a conversation, build that idea out on the wall, and then ultimately bring that to fruition, you're going to get to results a lot quicker than if you're not doing that. Right. And I think the other thing about this is the speed with which ideas need to innovate and the speed with which companies need to innovate has increased so dramatically that you can no longer afford as a company to lock your ideas in a box and work on them until they're perfect and then release them. Because if you do that, you'll be 20 years too late. And we've seen plenty of companies do and try that approach. Uh, I think if you look around and ask how many people are still carrying a BlackBerry, you'll, you'll see how, how easy it is to get corporate innovation internally to, uh, to run amok and forget that a lot of things are happening in the outside world and the world is changing much more quickly than, uh, than meets the eye. So openness really matters and being able to collaborate within teams really matters and outside of teams really matters. So one of the challenges is paying for all these changes and allowing for that collaboration, allowing for that transformation. So where's the money going to come from? And part of the, our answer is that there's this massive inefficiency in corporate real estate. That 40% utilization rate means that 60% of the space is paid for but not used. If you can squeeze that inefficiency out, you can afford to invest in better conference rooms, new technology, idea paint, more flexibility, new kinds of furniture, and therefore a more productive and happier workforce. And so it's critical to be able to pay for that innovation to squeeze the inefficiency out. And for that, you need the data. Good point. Well, as a last question for you guys, and I appreciate you doing this over time with us, is can you share a tip with our listeners regarding their space? Closing tip. What should they think about to 
if I was those are some easy buttons in, in terms of space that I work in I, I think it has to be flexible it has to be the ability for me to actually sit and, and stand and to walk around and to write on an uh, idea pane on the wall uh, to have the technology that's available uh, so it has to be pretty flexible and to be honest like Stas has said earlier times are changing in terms of space I don't care if I have an office anymore I just want to make sure I, the place I work in is flexible I mean, f find find a way to drive that those that serendipitous collision and collaboration. That to me, there's there's nothing nothing more important. Well, I did it with a game room mob. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pool table and a dartboard, and yeah, they get in there. That's, as soon as I add beer, in a keg, maybe I'll, it'll work better. Yeah, you get a thousand people in there. Yeah, that's right. I would say, look at tearing down the walls, removing the things that you don't need, and investing in the technologies, the platforms, the desks, the. T mm -hmm. uh, displays that people need to get work done and to collaborate and to share ideas. You don't need partitions, you don't need closed rooms, you don't need the classic carpets and ceilings. Get rid of all that old corporate stuff and invest in the technologies and platforms that let people collaborate and work and become productive. You mean people talking without email and just actually talking to each other? Getting right? up out of their desks, yes. yes. <laughs> I'd say two quick things. One is that um, you should really ask the question, why are we doing this? And if the answer to that question is because that's the way we've always done it, you might want to ask why. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good thing. Um, and the other is small details matter deeply. Mm -hmm. um, if, you are, if you're in the bathroom and the, there isn't enough water pressure and people can't wash their hands right, that's really annoying and it will make your people crazy and it will make them crazy day to day. And if you can't fix a small detail like that, don't worry about the big things. Fix the small ones first. Well said. Good tips, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. For more information from any of these guys, we'll have their websites on our website, commercialrealestateshow.com. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive suite of powerful commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R E A L N E X. Sozo Web Hosting and Cloud Solutions. Secure, reliable, and worry free. Visit sozo.com. That's S O Z O.com. FIU, Florida International University. Earn your master's in real estate online in as little as 10 months. Visit FIUonline.com. And by France Media, providing exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit FranceMediaInc.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit CREshow.com.